Admiral's Log, July 3rd, 1936. I've ordered the construction of a sizable group of destroyers. These tin cans are to support our capital ships in dealing with mines and submarines. Both of which are a very cost-effective and dangerous weapon the enemy can deploy against our ships. These new ships should be ready soon. Our efforts in the Pacific have shown that our ships have a dire need of a resupply point in the Pacific or a capacity to carry more fuel. With the way that things are now, our ships are on 60% of fuel by the time that they get to the AO. This means very little room to maneuver before being forced to return to port. As a part of our peace treaty with the Spanish, we were to get their base in Guam. Due to some legal nonsense, the Spanish got out of the deal to give us the agreed upon territory. My hope now is that we'll be able to win the war against the Japanese, the Germans or the Chinese quickly, so we can get one of their bases in the Pacific before this logistical nightmare is going to get even worse. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 9. It is the US 1930s campaign, we're in July 1936, still at war with Germany, still at war with Japan, and we have renewed our war with Russia. Well, I'm not even sure why the Russians keep picking fights, but for some reason, even with a fairly small fleet, they think it's a good idea. For some reason, I'm still blockading Spain. Um, Spain and I are at peace, and I was supposed to get the Canary Islands as well as Guam from them. And then the Spanish, I don't know, reneged on their deal. Let's call it that. And the game decided not to give me Santa Cruz and decided not to give me Guam. So it looks like they might need a bit more intimidating or perhaps a bit more bug fixing. Hello, devs. Um, so we're going to be developing a new battleship capable of both intimidating the devs as well as intimidating the enemy. This is going to be the Texas class. It was much requested that I name a battleship after Texas. So let's do this. This Texas class is going to be as big as I can possibly get it because American. And with that, I am, I think, maxing out the American hull size at 109,000 tons. Because I don't believe you can get any bigger than that. If I go back to the tech tree, I don't believe I can actually research anything bigger than the super battleship for the Americans. It's just like their tech tree stops at 109,000 tons. And of course, by adjusting the beam and adjusting the width, um, or the draft rather, it is possible to upgrade that a bit. But I've already maxed out cruiser design. Um, I don't think that I can get any additional battleship hulls, but who knows? Maybe, yeah, let's just prioritize it. Maybe we can get even bigger than this. At any rate, I have researched the Mark III 20 inch guns, so that is what the Texas is going to be sporting. These things are going to be even more expensive, even more uh, pricey, even more. <laughs> Even more American <laughs> than the previous iteration of ships. I'm also going to make them fairly swift at 33 knots because I have had it with ships running the fuck away. So, modern tower 5, secondary tower 6, and look at all the real estate on this ship. You got so much space. Of course, if you start adding 20 inch guns, then that space does evaporate fairly swiftly, but so be it. Let's give this guy diesel 2s, and let's give them some oil. Let's make sure that we have a bunch of funnels so we can actually go to places. 57% engine efficiency! What the fuck? Is that because this thing is so heavy? Maximum optimal speed, 33 knots. Yes. If I go to 32 knots... If I go to 30 knots... No, 30. 3-0 is usually how that works. 23,000. 21,000. Hmm. I guess we're going to have to refuel at some point. So this thing is not going to be able to go as far as I would like it. Unfortunate, but so be it. Okay, let's give this guy electric steering gear. Let's give them a hefty auxiliary engine. And a better propeller shaft as well as... Hmm. Do I go for an unbalanced rudder? Gives me more turning rate. These things are going to be... Wow! 652 turning circle? 492. That is impressive for a ship this size. 
I know I haven't maxed it out yet. I'm still going to add 50,000 tons to this thing. But so far, I am impressed. I didn't think I could get away with quite that much. Let's go for sonar. It's going to be RDF. I'm picking RDF for additional reconnaissance as well as the ability to aim my guns a bit faster. Now, gun aiming does not mean turret rotation. Those are two different things. So it's not like you're instantly going to be snapping your turrets to the target. As much as I would like that, that is not a thing. All right, buddy. Here's another 620 inches. Uh, of course, being American, we cannot simply accept 20 inches. No, 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 no. We're going to make these 20.9s. The biggest gun you can currently have in the game. These babies reload in 217 seconds. So let's fix that. 168 seconds. Now, if you really want to make these um, load extremely slowly, you can add a 20% barrel length or 17. That's the max. And that would give me a reload of 272 seconds. That is four minutes and change. That's a bit much. Um, on paper, it gives you a range of almost 50 kilometers. Effectively, you don't get that. Because it's been my observation that the game does give you the additional accuracy. It does give you the additional reload. It does not give you the additional range. So that means that I am not going to be using this. I'm going to be using the standard barrel length, saving my ship 5,000 tons. Now, this thing is essentially going to be a battle chariot for these 20.9 inch guns. They're going to deal ridiculous amounts of damage because they can. Two powder. Uh, I would like a bit of barbette armor so this thing doesn't blow itself up. Semi armor piercing, I think, is fine for this ship. It means that I can, at any range, let's say 20,000 meter range, I can pen 24 inches of armor. That is a lot of pen. A lot of pen. If I give them super heavies. 20,000 meters, 26.9. Really nice. I think that that might be able to go through, oh, I don't know, most battleships? Yeah, depending on where you hit them, surely, but... Oh. Nah. <laughs> Look at the displacement on this thing. Maybe I cannot get away with triple, or with uh, a bunch of these. If Even if I take this thing off, it's still going to be too heavy. Ugh, okay, fine. Um, that's going to save me 5,000 tons. This is going to save me another couple thousand tons. Yeah, we're going to just put a couple of secondaries around this. These weigh 289 tons per triple. For a double, you get 186. Hmm. These give me 80 per. This gives me 75. If I switch to three funnels... I can get better engine efficiency, and that means I can get slightly better range. At... Yeah, definitely at more displacement, more weight. So be it. As for the rest... What's my turning circle? 610? That is impressive. Now, when it comes to armoring this ship, I'm going to give it a 4-inch inner belt, 3-inch... Uh, give me 4 inches of superstructure, give me 15 inches of main belt armor... Okay, 14. Give me 7 on the 4, 7 on the stern. 5-inch uh, foredeck, aft deck. I'm going to be in trouble when it comes to my ability to deal damage with secondaries, because I don't have any. Let's go for Antitorp 2. I mean, this is 132,000 tons. The chance that this thing gets sunk by something as simple as um, a torpedo... A 21-inch torpedo is negligible. Now, when it comes to the HE shells, I think we're just going to go for flat-out maximum HE damage. And uh, this, with, let's say, 10,000 meter range, gives me 14 inches of armor with HE on the belt. At greater range, let's say 25 kilometers, if I hit with an HE shell and I hit the enemy deck, I can pen 19 and a half inches at 25,000 meter range. 19 and a half inches. That is a lot of firepower. Anyway, secondaries. How about we use 6-inch guns? I believe I have everything upgraded to Mark 5. No, not the 8s. The 8s and 7s are Mark 4, but these are Mark 5. Okay, double barrel everywhere. 
I know that I, I have the other battleships with uh, the bigger guns, but this is going to be fine. We have a slight aft weight offset, that's fine. Um, can I put one there? Yes. I do want this thing to be able to rotate 360 degrees, which it can. And since their turret rotation is so slow, it's less than a degree per second. I'm going to try and put this thing a bit farther forward so that it's also going to be able to do that. Because I do need the ability to get these guns on target, and ideally fairly swiftly. Slide four weight offset. Let's move the secondary tower around. Point one, that's better. Of course, you could try to completely optimize this ship and make sure that it has as much, or rather as little of a citadel as possible by making it as tiny as possible, but whatever, it's fine. Um, guns, let's go for 20 inches, let's go for 10 inches on the top, let's go for 15 inches on the barbette. Try not to get yourself blown up. 13 inches, ah, oh, crap. Slight overweight. How many shells do I carry anyway? Um, 300. Mm, that should be fine. This thing's through. No, it's no longer a 360. Shit. Okay. Go back. That's better. Uh, this thing. Yeah, it's fine. <coughs> Still slightly overweight with the ship, so let's go to 3.8 inches of superstructure. 3. Five, no, not 3. 3.5. And I do get a bonus of 148%, so it's going to be enough. 16 inches on the conning tower. And we are under our weight limit, so that's fine. Mm. 0 0.8. 0 0.6. Put these here. 0 0.3. No, oh, come on, get over here. Zero two, there we go. I'm gonna place these slightly farther back and pull these in just a touch. Point two, I'm willing to accept that. Okay, did I skip anything? Range is fine. Displacement is really, really big. Um, this is something you, or someplace you can save weight. The auxiliary engine. It also means that you're going to be sacrificing turret traverse speed, which I generally don't really want to do, because I like my turret traverse speed. It's going to be 0 0.96. Yeah, that's 0 0.01. But that's just turret rotation speed, and of course these things do more. They also turn your ship around faster, they shift your rudder faster, they pump more water. It's fine. The only thing I don't have is a triple hull bottom, which is additional resistance and additional torpedo flooding chance. Well, reduction. But I simply cannot add 5,000 more tons. Unless... No, I don't see where I'm going to get 3,000 tons. Mm. Oh, that's actually lighter? Yeah. Where am I going to get that tonnage? Because I now need about 2,000 tons. I don't want to sacrifice more torpedo blistering. Um, All or nothing citadel is going to be lighter. What about just a double? There we go. We're back under our weight limit. Slight displacement issue. There we go. Perfectly fine. Texas. Nine 20 point nine inch guns, which reload in 177 seconds with a cadet crew. So if you improve the, the crew training, they should be fine. The only issue is the ship pitches up and down quite a bit. And with that, you're going to get less accuracy by 9%. That is a bit unfortunate. Now, if you have a lot of pitch, you don't want that. You can always pull in the uh, biggest displacers towards the center of mass of the ship. So... Just try to make your ship as compact around the core of the ship as possible. 
And that way you should be able to offset this. But the problem is then I'm going to be having so much weight on the bow that it's difficult to balance the ship out. So you can play around like this and you can generally try to fix it like this and it might actually work. But the issue is your pitch, especially with guns as big as these, are going to be fairly bad. Although, I'm probably not helping the situation by having all of those guns on the stern. There, now it's 32. I now have additional 2,000 tons, so let's go for that triple hull bottom anyway. Or not. More barbette armor. I did have to sacrifice some guns. Which I'm not that much of a fan of. Uh, let's put some more secondaries on there. Four inch dual barrels. Three. Three inchers. One, two, three. I never really understood the spot that you have there. Because I don't think anything fits in there. It just makes no sense, this attachment point. It's a bit borked. Okay, let's put the rest in armor. So let's go for 15 inch main belt. Okay, 14.5 main belt. I mean, the AI is generally quite awful at designing ships anyway, so <clears throat> we should be fine. Um, 2%. Is the pitch any better? Yeah, it's still minus 8.3. Oh, I'm slightly overweight now. Fine. Reduce the four belt a touch. There. Okay. Fixed. Texas. Let's get this thing built. It's going to take me a long, long time. 38 months. It's three years and two months. So we're going to be taking a while to build these things. And I suppose they should be ready by 1939-ish. Something like that. Get me 936 million. Haha. <laughs> It's not even that much more expensive than the Ticonderogas. Cool. I'll take three. I also have a couple more of the Ticonderoga, or I have the Ticonderogas coming out. Ticonderoga, Louisiana, and West Virginia. And of course, we have Texas, South Carolina, and Kearsarge. Uh, the naming convention for the game is such that it doesn't use one. It just has a really big list of names, and it just randomly plunks one onto a ship. So it's not like these are going to be named after states. Um, they're really, really random. I know that's going to piss some people off. So be it. Take it up with the devs, not with me. Anyway, I still have a whole bunch of ships currently in, well, the shores, the coast that I have. These are the new Galaxy class. They're ready to go. And it looks like, interestingly, none of them have any defects. Nothing. That's really nice. Now, the Galaxy class have those triple 10-inch guns, as well as a whole host of 5-inchers. So, my enemy, which is using a lot of smaller ships, the Germans, they should be a prime target to get hit by those new cruisers. Hold on, that's the Brits. The Brits with 5 battleships, and this is the last German battleship. Interesting. Okay, let's start forming up the fleet. Send them out there. We're going to have everybody link up and uh, potentially have them borrow a battleship from a different group. Because one of those battle groups has, I think, four... Oh, the legend here! Oh, the first Alaska's ready! Perfect! You, you, and you, go. I didn't even know the Alaskas were ready yet. Off you go. I'm going to be spending a lot, so I'll have to balance my budget. There's another Alaska class, the Georgia. Do I have anything in Miami? Yeah, the DD called the Fiske. Let's move. Let's send the DDs, because I have to be able to take down destroyers. There's the Pittsburgh. Perfect. All right. What about the west side? Seattle have anything? Yes. Two BCs and two CAs. Send them out. Um, yeah, another BC, sure. I'll take it. Let's go. There's another fleet of destroyers around here that I can use. And I think that should fix it. 
I don't believe I have any other ships which are currently unemployed. Well, some of them, maybe Portland. Why do I have ships in Portland that are not being used? Isn't Portland over there? We're talking about a different Portland. Here. Boston, Montana. Oh, there's the Montana. These again are Galaxy class ships. Yeah, let's just project as much power as we can over Germany and make sure that they see reason, i.e. surrender their ass. I mean, they're not doing very well. 12,000 versus 334. They're doing really, really shit. Um... Oh, hey, they fixed the third priority. I was complaining about this a couple of episodes ago because mine was locked under the cruiser design. They apparently fixed that because I now have my third priority back. That's nice. All right, let's go and look for a battle. A few months later, some things have happened. I'm now at war with the Chinese. I'm not sure why. I didn't provoke the Chinese in any way, but well, they declared war. It's fine. They instantly got blockaded by the fleet that's currently in the Pacific. In the North Sea, a couple of my ships ran into a mine. Even though I'm not anywhere near the German ports, I'm just sitting in the middle of the North Sea. My ships are running into mines. So I had to pull the Helena, the St. Louis, the John R. Craig and the Sellers off of the task force to try and send them home for repairs. And of course that is when three German destroyers strike. They have seen an opportunity to deal with these damaged ships and they're looking forward to taking them down. This could be an interesting fight because I saw I think 78% damage on some of my cruisers. Uh, that could be really bad. Look at that. Helena is in a pretty poor state. Three engines out, rudders out. This is why they're being sent home. Same for the St. Louis. The DDs are just as bad. The only actual destroyer I have functioning, mostly, is the Sellers. So it is essentially going to come down to the Sellers to take down three German destroyers, while the rest of my ships beat a hasty retreat. Of course, this game being the way it is, this does mean that even if I kill the enemy destroyers, they're still going to get the victory points. Because, of course they are. It is just... Well, it's just something we have to deal with. Um, I can keep complaining about it. It's not going to make the devs fix it any faster. And I can have all ships run away and not get any victory points. Or I can at least get some victory points by at least destroying their incoming destroyers. And, of course, fully saving my ships. Otherwise, I'm going to be just sitting there waiting for these destroyers to come in and blow up whatever is left of my cruisers. Now, when it comes to a gunfight, I am very confident I can win this because they have a gun on the bow, a gun on the stern, and some smaller secondaries. These are 4.4 inch guns. Their torpedo launcher on the bow is largely useless, and there's another torpedo launcher on the stern. The seasoned crew on the cellars is going to have to deal with these three boats all by itself, and I hope that it is capable of doing that. Considering it's a seasoned crew, and the weather's nice and calm, I think we should not really have any issues here. It seems the AI has already seen fit to... Oh, there we go. Seen fit to use the smokescreen on the German DD, so that's good. That's a nice torpedo attack you got there. Shame if I saw that coming. So let's mop up these German DDs. At least get some victory points out of it. Uh, hit that up with a torpedo launch. You never know, you might accidentally get something. Peter's away. Oh, your rudder got damaged. Now that is unfortunate. That is unfortunate, sellers. Uh oh. Oh, that one suicided. The rest is a non issue. What about my torps? That's a nice fan fire. I swear I launched torps at them, but uh, doesn't look like anything to me. Alright, so gun battle it is. Punch a hole in them. Since the game is bugged, we might as well exploit the bugs. Because if I don't hit the V78, and if it's behind the V70, then I'll definitely hit the V70. So we're going to shoot this guy up. Come on. Please make it look like you're trying. Hmm. Was expecting something more. So far, we've done 4.9k damage in a 3 versus 1. 
They've done no, in 5k now. They've done 2.2. And now they're smoking themselves up. The sellers, not really in a great state, having lost two engines, a rudder, and her fire control. The conning tower has been badly damaged. So this could very well be a problem. Because at this rate, I won't be able to accurately fire at anything. Now, arguably, my cruisers could, could be useful, even in their extremely damaged state. Because even in their damaged state, they can probably still accurately fire at the enemy. The problem is, I don't want to risk it. The Sellers is getting properly messed up by these German DDs. They are... Well, this guy's out of torps. V46 is out of torps, so only the 78 has torps. Alright, <clears throat> if that's the case, they will eventually catch up. They just won't really be able to do anything about the DDs that I currently have. There's the third engine out on the cellars. What's the plan here, Germany? You're still going to keep coming this way? I mean, by all means, seeing as I can't really run away anyway. I'm doing 14 knots, but these guys have also been fairly badly battered. 22, 22, 22. So they're being limited by the 70, I think. The 70 or the 78. They do have a lot of ammo left. What do you mean, angle? Oh, both your stern turrets got destroyed? Kidding. Not so kidding. Well, that's unfortunate. That means we're going to have to go bow in and just shoot whatever we have left at them. But uh, this is going to get increasingly uncomfortable. It will probably cost me the ship. But I'd rather make a stand and at least shoot something. Rather than just sit there and wait for my death. Turrets. Fire. I know I can end the battle. But I'm not quite willing to do that just yet. I think the Germans are turning their ships around so fast that they're not actually able to bring their guns to bear. Nice. In 90 seconds I have a smoke screen. I'm kind of relying on bow armor right now. Not so far as I have any. <clears throat> oh, that's not good. Accuracy 2%. Their accuracy is four times what I have. Yeah, Sellers is going to be dead. This is what I find really stupid. What I had in the North Sea was a really potent fleet. And the Germans just come in and think, hey, there's a huge fleet. And it's just sitting there. And apparently my ships agree and they're not actually moving. They're not actually trying to make an effort to either intercept the incoming destroyers. Or uh, don't think it's really useful to intercept these guys when they came out of port. Nope. The German DDs are just allowed to go after my ships. Randomly. Because of course they are. Oh, and I now have no guns left. All my turrets got destroyed. So yeah, that's a... I'm not going to call that a feature. That's a bug, I think. Why am I not able to, uh, to engage these DDs? That makes no sense to me. Credit where credit is due. These DDs do have Minehunter kits. That's interesting. This is going to be a pretty big... Yeah. Of course they got a lot of victory points. Not for sinking the cellars, but because the game says, Hey, you damaged all of these ships. No, you fucking didn't. And now you got the victory points twice. Fix your fucking game. A little while later, I have the Jonar Craig, which I believe I detached from the force because it was supposedly damaged. It is getting engaged by the same two destroyers. Again, in the North Sea, and I don't understand why the rest of my task force isn't actually there to support. The game doesn't explain this. The game doesn't give you any indication as to how you can make sure that these battles happen. But, I don't know, a light cruiser or a heavy cruiser would have been a very much better pick to deal with destroyers. Rather than me just sending out one destroyer. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I know that you have the engagement range or your uh, your fuel range, your operational range, that apparently can set more favorable encounters. But 
I'm not seeing it. I have my range on my destroyer set to, I believe, max. It's just so they don't have to resupply every uh, two days. It's just not doing anything. And I think this is an issue that the game suffers from a bunch more. They don't explain really what is going on. And that causes quite a bit of confusion to the user. Even to me. I don't mean I'm a great player at this game. It's just I've been playing it for two years and there's still a whole bunch I don't understand. Because the game doesn't understand or doesn't explain it. Alright, let's finish off this V-78. I've done about six times the damage they have. But them being two destroyers, I doubt I'll get a lot of points for it. Maybe 300 or so. There we go. At least we reclaimed our honor and we sunk the ships which were capable, or rather responsible, for sinking my one destroyer. There we go, 1,000 points. Does that even the odds? Meh. Because they now got the victory points, I think, twice, because they also were able to hit my ships with a mine before that other battle happened. So that's a bit weird. I would much rather have an encounter with the German fleet at large, not this. Oh, there we go. It was the Cecil, the uh, Charles P. Cecil, that I detached from the fleet because it was badly damaged. And again, it is getting attacked. But note the position of the Cecil. It's right next to my battleships, right next to my heavy cruisers, and right next to my light cruisers. And the AI goes, yeah, but we can catch that. <sighs> Why? Why? How bad is the damage? Look at this. How am I supposed to win this? At least I have functional turrets. That's, that's quite something. <clears throat> Although they have been damaged. And if I avoid the battle and just leave... Of course, it's going to go to the Germans. So we're going to have to try and outshoot this guy with whatever I have left at a speed of 13 knots. This is going to be funny. Here we go. German destroyer spotted. They are in a pretty terrible state just as much as I am. So I don't know who is going to be able to shoot who. Look at that thing. Why do we keep sending out badly damaged ships out after each other? There's still 12 clicks out. Here we go. Charles P. Cecil engaging the German destroyer. They have sent out a really badly damaged German destroyer to meet my damaged destroyer. Again, I don't understand why my cruisers aren't helping out, but such is the way that the game is. So the Cecil is going to have to take this guy down single-handedly, and it looks to be doing exactly that. The German destroyer is taking a lot of damage... And should be going down soon. But these torpedoes that are inbound could be a real problem. Unless that happens and the game ends. So hopefully the Charles can now make it home. Without further hiccups. And well, I gained some victory points from it. But the amount of victory points that I'm gaining are quite low. I need to sink something bigger. A battleship, a battle cruiser. Heavy cruisers, if you have nothing else that I can sink. And um, another problem that I have with Germany is if you want to blockade the Germans, I think you also need to blockade the Baltic fleet. Which means that you're going to have to pass here. This is not exactly an area where I feel very safe. Considering that there are quite a lot of mines. But I'm going to send this group in anyway. I'm going to send them to the Baltic. And hope that they're able to do something useful there, like blockade. Without running into every single mine that the Germans have deployed. Because supposedly they got mines around... Sorry, that's the Russians. They got uh, mines around Palau, around Danzig. I get that. But they shouldn't have any mines everywhere else. Like around Denmark, Copenhagen, Malmo. This passage where my fleet's going through. When it comes to power projection, I have about 12 times what the Germans have. In the Baltic, if I block that as well, maybe the Germans will see reason. And especially considering I have 15 times the victory points they do, they should be able to be... Well, they should be killable. They should be terminable. A little while later, this thing is turning into a pure comedy show. Because again, I have the whole fleet sitting in the North Sea. 
And the Charles P. Cecil, the destroyer that's been badly damaged, says, Hey, dude, we have cornered an enemy task force. We have found the V-75. It is badly damaged and we can sink it. Completely bypassing the fact that this thing is blown to, well, not quite to bits, but it's being held by duct tape and some uh, tarpaulin. Uh, that's... Th what? What? How? You w This thing was a half dead a month ago. I didn't send it back to port. How the fuck are you repaired? And not a little bit. You're full health. The only thing you've lost is a bit of crew. How, dude? Again. If the game would actually understand or explain what's going on. Like, hey, dude, we repaired your ships. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That's what I wanted. Um, I don't know, maybe we docked at a British port and they did some emergency repairs? I don't know. But the game doesn't understand, or doesn't explain that. It just goes, boom. Charles P. Cecil, full health. Well, it was, anyway. And it just doesn't explain why that happened. What changed that made the Charles suddenly be full health? I really don't get it. I really don't. And I wish I did, because it means I cannot really build a strategy around this, because it is extremely random. The one moment the game goes, yeah, this thing is being held together by spit in the prayer, and the next, it goes, oh no, the ship's fully healthy, what are you talking about? Like, make up your mind, it's either one or the other, but it cannot be both at the same time. This is like Schrodinger's destroyer. You don't know if it's alive or dead until you enter the battle. But the Charles was being detached to get repaired, so arguably you'd think it's Schrödinger's destroyer being half dead. But uh, I guess not. Giving me another 400 victory points. I don't get these 1v1s. I mean, they're cute. They're just not what I signed up for when I put the whole fleet in the North Sea. And I don't think that the Germans get to pick what sort of a fight they want. See, this is more interesting. I am about to attack an undefended port with my strike force. It's over there. This is the Arkansas of the New York class. The Long Beach, again, New York class. And a couple of the Kansas class heavy cruisers. The Nashville, as well as a couple of destroyers. I can finally get the Arkansas and the Long Beach to stretch their legs and get those 16-inch guns firing. All of them. Against a Guafan class battleship with eight 15.3 inches, This thing is slow. 21 knots. It's gonna be fairly easy to hit. It does come with a fairly hefty amount of secondaries, but if that's all that they get, then I'm not terribly impressed. Now, this being a uh, port strike, I can also have a go at the convoy, provided I can see it. But I can't, at least not yet. So let's send in the DDs. Try not to torp anybody on your way here. Try not to crash into anybody. And Arkansas and Long Beach, you know what to do. Rumble with their 16-inch guns. And hit this guy flat on the broadside. And wipe it out, ideally. That's the plan. There's the salvo. I think that's just the opening salvo. Or are we launching everything we got? No, that's just three shots per ship. So just the ranging salvo. 40% accuracy now. And the next salvo is going to be a lot more deadly. It's the first fire breaking out. And that's half your ship gone. That's... <laughs> Holy crap, that's loud. Um, that's one flash fire. Engine is out, ship's flooding, rudder's been damaged. Yeah, it was their X turret that decided to jump ship. Why are we doing 12 knots? What? Why are we doing 12 knots? What the fuck? You're not following anything? Nothing is following you? Nope. <laughs> okay. For some reason the battleships are just going... 
Nah, 12 knots is fine. We can slow down, okay. What the? Move! Detach. 18 knots! Dude! Out of 27? What, do I have low engine efficiency or something? Or are these ships a bit borked? Oh. Secondary target. Reno. We got range. Take these things out before this battleship dies. Arkansas. Uh, shoot this. You shoot that. Don't kill the battleship yet, especially if we can strike their convoy. Don't kill the battleship. No, we need them alive. Crazy as that sounds. You're dead. 63,000 damage? I've seen some high damage numbers, but 63,000 is a new record. Okay. Uh, they had five transports. Emphasis had. Because they don't have those anymore. Um, here's one. CLs. Take this guy out. Don't... Kill the battleship. Thank you. There's one more. Right there. See? What? It's not the weather conditions either. Why are my ships unable to go to full speed? Why are my destroyers sailing around at 10 knots? Division maximum speed 10 knots? 17 knots for the battleship? What the hell is this, then? What? Like, none of these ships have taken any serious damage. There's no weather that's capable of explaining this. I mean, if it were in a storm, I would understand. You don't go full ahead flank in a storm. But there isn't any. Just tell me what's going on, game. Oh, man. I think this flash fire did a bunch more damage than I expected, because they have no ammo for any of their 15-inch guns now. Yeah, you did. That's going to give me a nice amount of victory points against the Chinese, and should maintain the blockade. My casualties. I didn't even sink the thing. Okay. <clears throat> 4,000 victory points. Thank you very much. So what does that mean for the port strike? What does that mean? Does that mean that the port strike went through? That'd be nice. Let's see. Yeah, I attacked an undefended port. I gained another bunch of victory points from the transport sinking. Some transports are detected which are prey. Perfect. I regained some crew. Holy fuck. How are all my destroyers running into mines? They're the only ship that's equipped with an anti-mine weapon. And where are they? Is that this group? No, that's the Charles. Dude, get out. Run. You got fuel? Moreover, you got... You got full fuel. Who refueled you? Where's the rest of my American task force? I didn't send them to the North Sea. Or to the... Med. What the hell is going on? Oh, you have got to be shitting me. The whole... The rest of the fleet moved. The DD is still there. Yeah, that explains a lot. That explains a lot. Okay, we're still blockading China, that's good. I would love to get a whole bunch of victory points against the Chinese and just get one of their provinces. So I can potentially get a port if the game feels so inclined, which you never quite know. Did destroyers here run into mines? No. But it's, it's not these either. Oh, then it's these. You fucking idiots. Like, why did you run into a mine? You're in the middle of the Baltic. 
There are no mines. Fine. Invade Germany. Mission, invade. Execute. All right, guys, that'll be it for today. Um, I hope you guys... I'm not even sure if I can say I hope you guys enjoyed anymore because it's such a borked game. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon for the next. Let's leave it at that.